Hi there, it's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy. And um, today is all about Paper Pumpkin. So this is, let me make sure I get the right name, Jan, uh, June 2021 Expressions in Color Paper Pumpkin Kit. And I will be honest with you, this kit is fan stinking tastic So let me show you what I did with my kit. And if you're not familiar with Paper Pumpkin, I'm gonna show you a few things like, let's show you what's in the kit first. First of all, it comes in a box. Usually it's in the orange box, like a pumpkin, but this time it was in this beautiful pink and purple box. But of course you get the instructions of how to put your kit together. This kit was cards. Some kits aren't cards, there are other 3D projects and stuff like that. But the kits are too big to even fit in my camera. They have all the instructions and the pieces and parts you use on each card. It has a cool little um, ruler, couldn't cope with that anyway, a little ruler over here on the side. And then um, my favorite part is the back here, where it'll show you a couple turn alternative projects, all the puff stuff that's in the kit, and the coordinating colors. So down here it says the coordinating Stampin' Up! colors is Bumblebee, which in this kit we got a little ink spot of Bumblebee and a bonus ink spot of Evening Evergreen. A couple other colors in there are the Fresh Frieza that I happen to have the big ink pad or the standard ink pad and the Polish Pink, which I happen to have that one too. So we're gonna set those aside. We'll probably use those later when I make some alternatives. But that's part, oh, and then here you can scan it and see how the paper pumpkin is put together. So there's a video on there too. So that's the instructions. This month's kit coordinates with the inspection, <laughs> it coordinates with, let me try that again, the expressions in ink suite. Although really it talks about the designer series paper. And I, when I saw, I've been eyeing this suite anyway, and when I saw it went with this month's paper pumpkin, I went ahead and bought it. And now the designer series paper is on back order until I believe next week. And I'll show you the other elements in this suite as we go along with the video. Other things you get in your kit is we get the twine, you get your adhesives. Look, my glue dots are almost all used up, which is not, it's not normal for a paper pumpkin, but I'll explain that as we go too. I love these little iridescent adhesive back sequins and then the stamp set. And let me show you the stamp set because if you go to paperpumpkin.com and about paper pumpkin and scroll down to the bottom, you can print out this sheet here. Now this is a case insert for our stamp cases. But what I like to do first of all is you can see the stamp set better. So I like to print that out. And then I just take this and fold it in half. And then I have a notebook of all my paper pumpkins. So I just take this and stick it in my little folder here that goes in my notebook. Of course, it's easier when you're not on camera. <laughs> okay, maybe it's impossible <laughs> when I'm on camera. There we go, no, it's not impossible. But then I have it all ready to just go in my notebook and then when I'm done with my stamp set, I put it in here and then when I flip through my notebook I can see what stamps I have and that's just how I organize my paper pumpkin stamps a little bit but we're gonna hang on to those we'll set this aside we don't need that anymore so let me show you what this, the cards look like with the kit so here's the picture and you'll notice that mine are just a little different I like one extra layer on my cards so I um, take and I cut those cards, and look, I forgot to stamp. I was so bummed I didn't look at the instructions, and I forgot to stamp the background with the stamp. So really this one of these three cards, and these are note card size. I like this one the best because I forgot to stamp them, but really they're all really pretty. But that's one of them. And here's another one. This one's really pretty with that huge um, floral vellum piece in the background. And I added this basic white border back here on this one and I think this one's my favorite look how pretty this one is now you'll notice with the stamp set that there's no happy birthday it's just the congratulations however 
the artistically inked stamp set which is part of that suite that we talked about the expressions earlier it has this happy birthday and I send out a lot more happy birthday cards than I do congratulations cards so that's why I used this stamp here for the happy birthday on this card and then so that's the nine cards that come in the kit and then of course they give you envelopes for all those cards too so then now that I'm done with all my cards and I told you how I cut my card bases down so then I can get twice as many cards. Let me show you some of my alternatives. So here's one of my favorites. Now this is that Fresh Frieza paper, or I'm sorry, ink, and I'll show you how I made this background piece. This is from the die that's in the suite. The die set looks like this. It has this great big floral image, kind of like you saw in this card and I took that and just cut it out with vellum put it on that background that we're going to make together they had tons of extra tags in the kit so I just used the extra tag and a few more of those sequins and made the card like that I think that one is really pretty in the fresh Frieza then I made this card here this is with the bumblebee the same background that I'm going to show you in just a minute and this I brought in this and now expressions of ink. I don't even know how to say what this is. This is a, a pack that comes in the suite. Right now this is on back order, but it's supposed to be available later this e week, so we won't have to wait long for it. But what it is is foil pieces with these die cuts. So little pieces like this, and it has the leaves and the little borders and stuff like that. And I use that piece here on this card. And then the last one, was this card. It's another alternative project. I'm going to show you how I did this background. And this one, they had a bunch of the um, thank you in different languages. And I know what merci and donka means. So I decided I could just use those on my cards. So that's, I'm going to show you how to do these backgrounds with the rest. So these, when I cut down my card bases, this is what I have left. And you can see, let me show you how I do that. So I have my paper trimmer here. Let me get these out of the way. And I think I'm going to do the bumblebee. Yeah. So I'm going to cut it down, first of all, to be five and a fourth. Because that's your, your layer, your normal layer for cardstock. So I'm going to cut it down. This side is the five and a half side, I'm gonna cut it down to five and a fourth, just take that little strip off. And then here, I'm gonna cut this down to four. So now I have a layer. Why don't I go ahead and do it to this too, since I'm gonna make, I'm not gonna make the two cards, but now I have my card bases already. Or I should say my card layers, there we go. And then I like to use Stampin' Up's Thick Basic White cardstock. And I'm going to just take an eight and a half, eleven, one sheet of cardstock like this. I'm going to go ahead and put the eight and a half is at the top here. And I'm going to score it, not cut it, but score it at four and a fourth. And then cut it at five and a half. And look, now I have two card bases that are ready for that white or that yellow card base on top. So then the last thing in the kit that you get is the tissue paper. And I don't know if you've seen me do this before, but I'm going to use this tissue paper to um, make that background on my card. And you know what? Before, let me cut one more down. So this, before I do the tissue paper, this is those note cards, right? And I'm going to take this and cut it down. Now these are three and a half by five when they're folded in half. But I'm going to take this and take it down to four and three fourths. And then I'm going to cut this so three and a half, it would be three and three eighths if I cut that quarter inch off of there. Let me do the same thing to this one because now three and three eighths, make sure I get that right. So now I have some layers for those card bases. Then instead of using the Whisper White or the Basic White and cut my own, Stampin' Up! has these little note cards, the Basic White note cards. They're really nice quality. They have envelopes that are already there for you. 
the um, card bases are scored, so we could just fold that in half. But it makes, maybe I can fold it in half, it makes a really nice card base. It's nice quality and you get that extra layer that you know I like on my paper pumpkin cards. Let me fold this one. There we go. And then if you take that piece that I cut down, it's gonna fit. I didn't cut it right. I bet you I cut it at four and seven eighths instead of three and three fourths. Nope, this way, Kathy. Yep, I didn't cut it. No, I did cut it quite right. All right, I don't know. But we're gonna layer this right here on top. I cut this one wrong. This one needs to be three. There, I did cut this one wrong. That's why I didn't layer on this. It'd be three and a fourth, because it starts at a three and a half. Now, let's look. Yep, there we go, duh. Okay, so now let's turn this into this pretty background piece like that. So again, with the tissue paper, I'm gonna take this and just run it through. I'm gonna take that fold here and I'm gonna cut a piece that's about, well, a little bit bigger than four inches because the card base, the bigger card bases are four by five and a fourth. So I'm gonna just cut it here and I don't know, it looks like it's about four and a half maybe. That just gives us a little bit of wiggle room. And then for the little one, we only need it like five inches, but I'm gonna give it a little bit of wiggle room, make it a little bit bigger, and cut it about five and a half. Okay, while I'm here, I might as well cut the other one too, and that one's five and a fourth. So I'm gonna cut that one more like six, like I said, just to give me a little bit of wiggle room, make it a little bit bigger than um, the cardstock that we're gonna cover. So now that I have it like this, right, I'm gonna bring in that Evening Evergreen ink and I'm just gonna use my standard ink pad rather than a little ink spot. And my um, stamp here, I'm gonna mount or put place on block the big like watercolor or the blotchy one, this larger flower image and this little flower image right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and place those on blocks. Let's see if I have, yeah, I do have blocks big enough. This one here, and then we'll put this one. Ooh, that's a dirty block, but he'll still work. So I want this one to be a little bit lighter. The evening evergreen is pretty dark. So I'm going to stamp off. I'm gonna ink him up good and stamp off the first time, and then I'm gonna just kind of stamp all over this um, piece of tissue paper. And I like the fact usually it comes with um, blue tissue paper and this time it was white tissue paper and it makes it so you can make it any color you like. And like I said, I'm going to just keep going around and seeing, whoop, I stamped that one without stamping off. Oh well, it's going to be just fine. more times. Now I do suggest I have a nice granite tabletop here so if you're having trouble getting a good image with this solid stamp like this be sure and use Stampin' Up's Pierce Mat and you'll get a better image. And speaking of Pierce Mat let's bring one in just so we have light paper on dark and you can see how that looks now. I haven't missed any spots there's no white spots except maybe right here I'm going to stamp off a couple times and then just fill in to make sure it's all nice and covered. Okay, and then with that flower image, I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to whoop, stamp that a couple times on here. And then I'm going to just fill in the gaps with that little flower. And it doesn't have to be perfect. And you notice I want this a little bit darker, so I didn't start um, stamp off with those lined images, just with that solid image. Okay, oh, I'm not done with that yet. So then, just to try to keep my hands clean, I'm gonna turn it over and make sure that the tissue paper ink is dry. And then I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna crumble it up. And then I'm gonna open it up and I'm gonna crumble it again making sure it gets nice and um, 
well, we're going to get some texture on there. I don't want it flat like at all. And now that looks pretty good. Make sure I have the right, this is the ink side is up. And then, and I have this kind of flat, not really flat. I'm going to just take my ink pad ever so lightly and just tap on there and get some of those creases a little bit more ink on them. And then it looks like that. Now one more time, I'm going to turn this over and get that extra ink off there. And that's just more or less so I can keep my fingers somewhat clean because you can see all that ink that would have got on my hands. Okay, now we have this piece and you'll notice it's just a little bit bigger than the cardstock I want to cover. But I'm going to take this now with my, um, no, you know, I was going to use my silicone mat, but I'm going to save my silicone mat. This glue that I'm going to use is kind of hard to get off the silicone mat. So I'm going to save my silicone mat for the purple card instead of this one. Oh, and I didn't do, well, anyway, let's go on. Because <laughs> I don't think I cut the purple card. We're going to do the yellow card. But anyway, so I just have a glue stick here. This is an Elmer's glue stick. I think it's easier to use with this um, technique. And I don't think it has to be an Elmer's glue stick. I just think a glue stick is easiest to use. And I'm going to make sure I get the edges of my cardstock really well. And then I'm going to go all over and just get that glue everywhere. Like that. And then I'm going to take my tissue paper now and lay that right on that piece of paper and then smooth it out as best I can. Now I might get wrinkles like this and I'll hold it up in a second so you can see. Peel it off of there. So you can see these wrinkles in here, but I think that just gives it even more character. Like I said, I'm glad I got those edges good so we can get the edges of our cardstock here. And now let me show you to make those um, corners nice and tight. I'm going to turn it over. I got a little bit of glue on my fingers. And I'm going to press that down really well. And then with my paper snips, I'm going to just take and trim the corners exactly like this, really close to the cardstock that's here. I hope you can see what I'm talking about. But just trim it exactly across like this on every, whoop, I missed that one, every corner. Like that. And then bring that Elmer's glue back in again. Or this glue stick. Like I said, it doesn't have to be Elmer's. And where'd my piece of scratch paper go? Here it is, I'll fold it in half so I don't get glue everywhere. But just in case I don't get it on my work surface, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue there and then just fold that over and a little bit of glue here and fold that over. And then last a little bit of glue here and then fold that over and right there. And then now that I have all those corners cut and folded like that, look how pretty the front of our card looks. And I do like the little bit darker because then that way I think it's gonna show up when we bring in let me find a vellum piece. Huh, I can't pick it up. Here I had glue on my fingers and now. There we go, here he is. We bring in that donka and lay that on there. Look how pretty that looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some dimensionals on the back of this. and lay this on our um, note card base. And look how pretty that is, like that. Now, usually I'm not a big fan of um, paper pumpkins adhesives, but in this case, paper pumpkin glue dots are so small and and translucent, or maybe it's because they're really thin, I'm gonna actually use the um, glue dots that come with the kit to put the vellum down, maybe I am, slickery little booger, onto my um, card base, and then that way you don't see them through the vellum. So that is one good thing about paper pumpkin glue dots. And look, now I am out. I'm gonna have to go find 
some glue dots from my past kit to do my last card here with the Donka. There we go. And then just get the backs off using a piercing tool or your pick a tool kit, um, this thing. And those, oh, I've got too many on there. The backs come right off. There we go. And then I'm gonna just lay that piece right there. Now, because the kit came with so many of those little tags, you could go ahead and stamp, I think it says thanks for everything in the stamp set, but because I used Donka here, I'm gonna just leave those off. And then I do like um, the green with these cute little metallic pearls. So I'm gonna, like I did on my other one, I'm gonna bring in the little metallic pearls and just scatter those along the front of my card. And even look how pretty that would be as a Christmas card with the green and the gold. I just think that's a really pretty card. But look how that background just pops like that. Okay, let's go ahead and do one more background. I guess we're gonna do the bumblebee since that's the one that I um, cut already. And where did I put those? This is the card that I made. Here it is. And here's the card base that I cut from that thick basic white. And just go ahead and fold on that score line. Got little dimensional papers and glue dot papers everywhere. Let's move that there. So here again, I have that piece of tissue paper that I already cut that's just a little bit bigger than my base. And I'm gonna take, first of all, let me grab my chamois here and clean my stamps, because I don't want them, I don't want the green on my yellow. So a little quick wash here of stamps. Whoop. There we go. And on this one, if you noticed, it's a little bit darker and I like it that way, so I'm not gonna stamp off on this one. I am gonna bring in the Bumblebee ink. And I'm gonna just stamp all over on this one and stamp off some and just cover that whole piece of tissue paper. I think this is the, a great stamp set for this technique to make your own background. I think this background's really pretty. And, um, well, I'm just a big fan of this stamp set. Let's keep going, make sure I have it stamped everywhere. Let's bring in that pierce mat so we can see instead of the white on white and see if I missed any places. Nope, I think that, well, no, maybe right here. I'm gonna stamp off once and just fill in those little blank paces just like that. And then with this big flower, go ahead and stamp a few of those on there. Now these are gonna be more subtle because I didn't stamp off, but I think I like it that way. Okay, put all of that away. I'm gonna bring in another piece of scratch paper here. Bring in that bumblebee that I cut down to be a layer on my card. Again, we're going to bring in that Elmer's glue stick and make sure I get the edges good. All over so it doesn't miss anywhere. And I made sure I got the edges. Whoop, don't look right there. I had a little bit of green ink on my finger. Should have washed my hands in between. But that's okay. We're going to lay that. Oh, I forgot to wad up my tissue paper. Yikes. <laughs> this might be a nightmare now. Make sure you wad your tissue paper before you put the glue on there. And now since I did that, I'm not going to bother with the ink on the um, wrinkles like I did the first time. But boy, because of that glue... It is pretty um, wrinkly on the front of my card. Look how pretty that piece is. Here we 
get going to make sure I get those edges good. <laughs> I can't believe I forgot to wrinkle up my tissue paper before, but look, it's going to be just fine. And you can subtly see those little flowers on there, but they're not, they're not loud at all. And then this time, I'm going to just take my paper snips and trim that tissue paper down to the same size as my cardstock. Almost missed right there, but it's going to be really pretty. There we go. One more edge. Just a little spot right there. Okay. And now look how pretty that bumblebee is. It's all stuck to my fingers. Once again, I'm going to just take that and put dimensionals on the back. I lost my, here they are, my dimensionals. Yep, you gotta waste your fingers in between. Hang on, I'm gonna take a little alcohol swab. I keep these on my desk and let me clean my fingers real quick because that's just irritating when everything sticks. There we go, a little bit of alcohol gets that glue off and a little bit of rub on your pants gets the rest of the glue off. Okay, let's put this onto our card base. See, and I think already look how pretty that is. But I took, in advance so you didn't have to wait and watch, those um, dies from the die set here and I cut out one of these and one of these. I'm going to save this one to use on the purple card when I make it later. But on the bumblebee card here, I'm going to take this and I'm going to glue it right here underneath my greeting. So in order to do that, I think it's easiest if you bring in a silicone mat get the clean side up. I'm going to take a little bit of liquid glue in the corner here. There we go. And then I'm going to use a dauber. Now, if you have some of Stampin' Up's old sponges, we don't sell them anymore, <clears throat> but they work too. Just take a quarter of a sponge and you pounce right there in the glue. And then I'm going to just kind of pounce on my um, die cut piece here. And this is another way so you don't see the glue through the vellum. Now, I didn't get it all over because I want it to have some character and kind of stick up in places, but then I'm gonna take this and just set it right there on the corner of my card and let that. And now it sticks really nicely to your fingers and to the card. And look how pretty that is. Then we'll take one of those tags that's left over in the kit. And let me see which tags I have left. Oh, it looks like all I have are the long skinny tags. So I'm going to bring in that happy birthday from the stamp set. And look, I haven't even put my stamps together. So let me show you real quick. If you buy a Stampin' Up! red rubber stamp that looks like this, it comes and you need to put the stickers onto your stamp. Let me show you the easiest way to do that. I'm going to bring in a block that kind of matches the size of my stamp. I'm going to take this sticker and peel the white backing and the whole sticker off. Put it face down onto my block. And then I'm going to remove those sticker pieces. Not the sticker, the sticker backing, I guess you would call it. Not the sticker. The sticker is going to stay on my block carefully take those backs off like this and then making sure my H is over here so that's going to be upside down let me see my H needs to be here making sure my stamp is the right way and then I'm going to kind of hover over it and put that sticker right on my stamp just like that and I think that's the easiest way to mount the stickers onto your stamps. Now, I wish I could give credit. I can't remember what demonstrator a long time ago showed me that tip, but that is, like I said, the best way to put your stickers on your stamps. Now, Paper Pumpkin always comes 
photopolymer like this, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you ever buy a stamp, a red rubber stamp from Stampin' Up, that's how you'd have to put them together. Okay, let's bring in some of that um, Bumblebee ink, and I'm going to ink that happy birthday up and then stamp it right here. I'm gonna practice once on my paper. Red rubber, I think you need to practice. And you notice I got it a little crooked. Let me practice one more time. Yep, that will look good, I think, we'll see. I might get my head in the camera. Stamp that down. Ooh, look, I'll take that one. Looks pretty good. <clears throat> and then, with those little gold pieces here in this kit, some of those foil pieces let's see what we can use maybe this piece to go behind it that one looks a little big let's find a little bit smaller one take this one and look how they're all die cut for you and ready to go like that i am going to turn this over i want this piece behind it and i'm going to use my dimensionals to hold that into place not this, that's, here's my dimensionals, like this, and let's see what we think there, oh, I think that's really pretty, but I think we could also use some of these gold pieces here, maybe these little sprigs inside here, just to give it a little bit more, yeah, let's find another one of those, there's one here, I can't get it out of the, <laughs> there we go. This, try to clean up a little bit here. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove those dimensionals. Or I should say the dimensional backings. I'm gonna leave the dimensionals on there. And then I'm gonna lay this right over that sprig that I die cut from the vellum. Looks like, let's see if I can get them straight. Is that straight? almost there we go that looks straight and then with these guys I'm going to just take a glue dot and I don't have any more glue dots for my kit so I have to use my roll of glue dots here but just a glue dot here and a glue dot on the base of this one and then let's just tuck those underneath my little label right here Yeah, no, I don't think I don't think I like him down there. I think I like him up here. There we go. And then we'll put this guy under there. There we go. Something like that. And then we have a few little sprigs that go with our big sprig and our happy birthday card, which is really pretty with that gold on there. Then along with those, I'm gonna go ahead and bring some more of these little um, pearls in there and I'll scatter those around. And that'll be the finishing touch here. And I think I'm going to keep going and I'm going to put five on there. One more. Should he go here? Yeah, that looks pretty good. And there you go. So there's all my cards. And then, like I said, I'll keep going and I'll make one more. I have a few more of the... Um, green pieces i could make one more of those and i haven't even touched the purple ones the purple leftovers from the card bases that i can make a couple more of those i could make a couple more yellow ones and then let's bring in the original cards from the paper pumpkin kit that i made that all look like this and i got a boatload of cards from this paper pumpkin kit that i think all are just beautiful <clears throat> so there you go so if you're interested in Paper Pumpkin, you can subscribe at paperpumpkin.com and you get the, month, the kit monthly, no questions asked. Or if you just want to try Paper Pumpkin, you could go to my online store, kathyhouse.paperpumpkin.net, and you can just buy one kit at a time. <clears throat> you then need to take that subscription number, though, to Paper Pumpkin and put it on there. And the next kit comes out about the 15th of July. So there you go. The last exciting news is on 
a Stampin' Up! has just announced that on June 24th, it's free shipping. So if there's other products that you like that you saw here, or if you're interested in the, what's this called? Expressions of Ink Suite. On um, June 24th, you can get it with free shipping. Now your order has to be $50 or more. But there you go. If you have any questions, be sure and let me know. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here on Friday. Bye-bye.